just on All right. We'd like to uh, get going. We'd like to welcome everyone that's here in the council chambers and everyone out there in TV land that's watching us. Um, I'm going to turn some time over to uh, Councilman Mendenhall for our uh, motivational message. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for indulging me for a minute on our, uh, on our motivational, inspirational thought tonight. We usually have somebody from the public do this, uh, but uh, fitting for um, election day today and, uh, and some recent circumstances in the state, uh, I asked the mayor if I could, if I could read some stuff uh, tonight. Um, uh, first of all, I'm so proud to see the, although it's frustrating to be in the lines down at, uh, down at the senior center uh, and cast a vote, uh, sure felt proud to be a part of the community that, uh, that has the parking lot full and overflowed into the road and people standing outside to exercise their, uh, their civic duty and, and their right to vote. Um, many of you already know the news and have seen the news for the past uh, few days of a, uh, a local um, uh, elected official uh, that, uh, that was serving in Afghanistan and, uh, and uh, tragically passed away over the weekend. I got a call Saturday afternoon from a mayor up in Ogden uh, that, uh, that that uh, that had happened, um, and uh, I got to know uh, Mayor Major Taylor um, a few years ago, three years ago, when uh, through the the League of Cities and Towns, uh, we served on the board together. Kier knew him a lot longer than I did, and before I did, as uh, as he served uh, in theater with uh, with the major. Um, You've heard the news now of Major Taylor uh, uh, dying in, in Afghanistan uh, while he was training alongside NATO troops uh, to, uh, to train the Afghan army. Um, on Sunday, a week ago this last Sunday, he made his last Facebook post, which has been read quite a lot in the news. And so, if, again, if you'll indulge me, I'll, I'll read his, uh, his Facebook post that had a lot to do with today. Uh, he said Sunday, last Sunday, uh, freedom, millions defy Taliban and vote in Afghan elections. The secret to happiness is freedom and the secret to freedom is courage. In the truest sense, freedom cannot be bestowed, it must be achieved. He says it was beautiful to see over four million Afghan men and women brave threats and deadly attacks to vote in Afghanistan's first parliamentary elections in eight years. The strong turnout, despite the attacks and challenges, was a success for the long-suffering people Af of Afghanistan and for the cause of human freedom. I am proud of the brave Afghan and U.S. soldiers I serve with. Many American, NATO allies, and Afghan troops have died to make moments like this possible. For example, my dear friend, Lieutenant Kefa Yatala, was killed, was killed fighting the Taliban the day before voting began. As the USA gets ready to vote in our own election next week, I hope everybody back home exercises their precious right to vote. And that whether the Republicans or Democrats win, that we all remember that we have far more as Americans that unites us than divides us. United we stand, divided we fall. God bless America. Mayor Taylor didn't obviously know what was in store for him less than a week later. Uh, but he did full well know the risk of serving our country and protecting our freedom and our rights to vote. The letter that's been released yesterday comes from another major, uh, Major Abdul Rahman Rahmani in the Afghan army. This is written to, to Major Taylor's widow. He says, Dear Mrs. Taylor, I am Major Abdul Rahman Rahmani, an Afghan Army aviation pilot in the Special Mission Wing, stationed in Kabul, Afghanistan, a few miles away from where your honorable husband was shot yesterday by an evil man. I served alongside your husband, Major Brent Taylor. I flew missions with him. He was an inspiring man who loved you all. I remember him saying, family is not something, it is everything. You may or may not be aware of some of our cultural differences, but in Afghanistan, family is not everything. 
For many of us, family are treated as property. Here, a woman cannot express herself fully, either inside or outside the house. Here, most families treat children unfairly. Let me admit that before I met Brent, even I did not think that women and men should be treated equally. Your husband taught me to love my wife, Hamida, as an equal and treat my children as treasured gifts, to be a better father, to be a better husband, and to be a better man. Mrs. Taylor, Jenny, if I may call you, I have lost eight members of my own family, including my father, three uncles, and two cousins in this devastating war brought on our nation during the last 30 years. I have lost too many friends to mention. I have personally been wounded two times. I still have the scars of this brutal war on my right leg. However, I will continue to fight this, still this good fight in the words of your respectful husband. I am fighting for a great cause. As Brent said, you fight for not only the safety of Afghans, but the safety of my family back in Utah. It is your fight that keeps us out of fear and out of the reach of global terrorism. We Americans don't want another 9-11 to happen in the United States. Jenny, please pass my words to your seven children, whom, whom I consider as brothers and sisters, to mine own five children, Taha, Ta Taba, Tawab, Aksa, and Wahab. Tell them that their father was a loving, caring, and compassionate man whose life was not just meaningful, it was inspirational. I gained a great deal of knowledge from him, and I'm a better person for having met him. Were he here, I know he would not take credit for that, but I want you to know it and hear it from me. I am writing this letter to you about a man whom I considered a close friend and whom I dearly loved. A leader, one who was the first to volunteer for any tough assignment, never stopped telling them what a great man their father was. He was a true patriot. He died on our soil, but he died for the success of freedom and democracy in both our countries. In his last message that I shared on my Twitter, he awakened not only Americans, but the world to the values of democracy and freedom. I want you all to know that most Afghans feel extreme sorrow and pain over the loss of your husband and father. When you think of our country and his sacrifice, I can't imagine your sorrow or sense of loss, but please don't think that the violent act that took his life is representative of our sentiments towards Americans. On behalf of my family and Brent's friends here in the Special Mission Wing, we pledge to continue to work hard until the end, the day when peace will return to our country and violence and hatred no longer claim the lives of both of our countrymen. I assure you that the one who shot him only represents evil and violence. I pray that God will give you strength, peace, and show you his blessings in this great time of sorrow. Please accept my condolence and sympathy. God bless you. In deep sorrow, Major Abdul Rahman Rahmani, Special Wing, Special Mission Wing Pilot from Afghanistan. Those letters to me, and as the media have seen that, uh, seen that played out, it only strengthened my resolve to be a better person and to be a better American. And it makes me proud to see on election day, even though, um, even though a great man uh, has passed on, it certainly wasn't in vain. It was protecting our freedoms. It was protecting a country uh, whom he loved the people, as, as I know Councilman Scobes can uh, testify to as well himself and Major Taylor. And in that vein, Mayor, I just encourage everybody to continue that when the next election day rolls around, that you remember people like uh, our hero friend, Major Brent Taylor, and, uh, and obviously his family. But you remember that, uh, that freedom certainly isn't free and that people sacrifice for us to, to be able to, to, to use that to voice and to vote. Uh, Brandon agreed to offer us a word of prayer to start meeting, if that's okay, Mayor. Yes, perfect. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful this evening for the opportunity we have to gather in these council chambers here at the city offices. We're thankful for the city that we live in and for the opportunity we have to serve. We're thankful for those that are in attendance tonight, from citizens to our young scouts, and pray that that will bless them that are with us and those that are watching at home as well. That we'll have a safe and enjoyable evening as we watch the events of the election unfold this evening. We ask that that will please bless that those that are elected will continue to uplift our country and serve with diligence and be able to make wise and correct decisions for 
for not only us locally and in the state of Utah, but nationally. We pray for those that are serving and uh, locally here, our, our public public uh, servants, uh, police officers, and and the women and men that that are in public safety as well as the military. We pray for the family of, of Major Taylor. Please bless Jenny and, and their children, that they will be comforted and, and blessed at this difficult time in their life. We are so grateful for the opportunities that we are given to serve and pray that we do so in an uplifting manner that betters not only our lives, but those especially that are around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Right. Thank you. Uh, I've asked Councilman Scopes to give us, uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please, please rise. Pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> We'll move into uh, public comments. Anyone that would like to address the mayor and the council, uh, you're sure welcome to come up and do that now. Well, state your name. Hello, my name is Alan Westman. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to address the mayor and the city council. And uh, on this election day, I uh, wish to express my appreciation and respect for your public service. Um, I am here to uh, make known to you uh, an opportunity that uh, we may take advantage of in the, in the city. Um, earlier this year, the Utah legislature passed uh, or amended the election law, uh, topical, uh, topical for the day. Um, this uh, is a, sets up a pilot project for municipalities in the state. Uh, to allow cities to opt in to try a new voting method called ranked choice voting or also known as instant runoff voting. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't want to use up too much time in describing the process, but the overall idea of it is that people will rank uh, candidates uh, in order of preference, one through however many, uh, t and it provides a way to avoid um, a vote being wasted for a candidate. If, if, if your preferred candidate doesn't uh, get selected, then your second choice uh, will get allocated to remaining candidates and so forth. Um, it is a voting method that is believed to offer, um, to, to promote and encourage more um, positive campaigning, to promote uh, candidates, encourage candidates to uh, try to speak to and represent a, a broader uh, sector of the, of the population. Um, and uh, it hasn't really been tried in Utah much, and so this is an opportunity, I think, to allow local government to be a bit of a laboratory uh, in our democracy to, to see uh, if this really works, what, what uh, snags there might be. And, uh, and so I, I would like to recommend um, that Spanish Fork City uh, get to participate in this. Uh, the requirement of the law says that um, if the, the, the municipality shall uh, state in writing to the lieutenant governor that the, it intends to participate in the pilot project for the odd number year coming up and uh, has a, a document signed by the election officer stating that the municipality has the resources and capability necessary to participate. So I just want to recommend for the city council to study the issue and if you feel like it would be appropriate to, uh, to uh, participate in that. Um, for your uh, reference, this is, election co uh, this is Utah Code Section 20A-4-602. Right. Hey, thank you. We'll have uh, Chris Kent. He's right there. Have him look into that for us. Thank you very much. Thank you Thanks for coming and bringing that up. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, we'll go to council comments. Uh, Councilman Gordon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Tyler and Scott might have a picture. The only thing I have to report the, uh, from the garbage side of things 
um, was a picture I wanted to show the scouts that that'll get as excited as, as Councilman Argyle when he sees something like this. Um, there's there's going to be some uh, a meeting tomorrow uh, at the Planning Commission to to see about moving the transfer station here to Spanish Fork. But I was out there at our transfer station today. It's in Springville, and uh, took a picture of our new our new loader and and. You can see Councilman Argyle here. He's just gawking at that thing because because he grew up on on equipment that he always had to to wire together and duct tape and things like that. And so uh, Max Sabi and uh, and our local uh, guys that are in charge of equipment they do such a great job of rotating our equipment and and doing an efficient job of making sure that that uh, our guys have, have the best tools. And so that'll be used to scoop up garbage and put it in the trucks and haul it to the landfill. So I thought that was, that was worthy of a, of a photo, photo op of, from the garbage. And that's really all I have to report on the garbage. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to give a little bit of time to Heather Yowd from our chamber. She has some things uh, that maybe she'd like to report on and fill us in on. So we have our November business of the month was RK Creative Studio. Um, Randy Kaufman, she used to be a big part of the chamber. So she's moved to her new location just in the basement of Tabitha's Way, and she was our business of the month. She's been a big supporter of the chamber. On this Thursday, the 8th, we have a ribbon cutting for the cookie crave. So yummy cookies, <laughs> try and come. Um, another ribbon cutting the next week on Tuesday the 13th for Cooney Orthodontics. And then on the 14th, there is the Valley Visioning kickoff event. Uh, this is an event to kind of help all of Utah County um, coordinate um, where they, the direction they would like to see Utah County going as far as housing, transportation, education, all of those types of things. So if you can come to that, it would be wonderful. Uh, we also have our lights parade, so one of our favorite events. It's on the 23rd this year, so if you haven't put your application in, which you guys have, just so you know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it was Emily. <laughs> uh, I was ahead on. I was, got that early. All right, and then uh, we also have our board elections um, that are coming up this month, so we'll be announcing our new board members probably in a week or two. And then the last thing is we moved our new networking luncheon to the 28th. And so that's the fourth Wednesday instead of the third because of the Thanksgiving holiday. So that's all I have. The farmer's market's over. And so I can see that she's crying inside like a lot of people that are going to be missing out on the wonderful things that come with our farmer's market. It's, it really is an awesome farmer's market here in Spanish Fork. So looking forward to that for next year. Uh, last month in one of our city council meetings, uh, Chief Adams had us look into a mobile command center. We currently, our police department operates out of uh, an older camping trailer. You may see it next to the park during Fiesta days. And uh, we got that uh, from uh, Hurricane Katrina, was it? Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was free to us, and so we've used, utilized that, and, and uh, it's becoming quite old. And so Chief's, Chief's shown us uh, some some newer options. We looked at that, and uh, last week I was able to meet with uh, Scott and uh, and Brian Perry from SFCN and a couple of lieutenants and go through Payson's Mobile Command Center, what they have. And this Thursday we'll be going through um, what the county uses, and we'll be making some decisions um, on kind of what our needs are for that. It would be used for uh, if we had a crime scene that uh, we needed to process some evidence on, and uh, and or things like you've seen the camper uh, at the at the Fiesta days at the park, things like that. And so, hats off to to Chief for being proactive and and his guys. I uh, I had a phone call conversation with a buddy of mine that's a police officer in a in a in a neighboring community, and, and he has to pay 20 bucks this month if he wants to grow a beard to the police department, and he has to pay to go to their uh, annual banquet that that they have and, and it's just a little bit different of a feel in, in the community that he works in than it does here and I applaud Chief and, and, and his lieutenants and the leadership here that, that they have going on. We have awesome, awesome officers. So I especially encourage you young scouts that when you see them, go up and give them bones, give them a high five or a handshake. They are, they are just like us. They put their pants on one leg at a time every morning and, and hope to come home 
hope to come home to their families safe and sound. And so, so uh, please, please love them and welcome them every time you see them. And uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Hey, thanks. Councilman Argyle. Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to second uh, our uh, a farmer's market. Um, I love coming down to it, even if I end up either buying a lot or not at all, just visiting the people. I'm grateful for the chamber. I'm grateful for the farmers and all those people who participate and bring their wares here to sell. Um, there's always something there for you to try or take home, and they have lots of ideas and lots of samples. That's the best part almost as good as Costco on a Friday afternoon. So if you uh, um looking forward to next year, um, I love the farmer's market and the gathering that it brings to the city. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Council member back. Um, mine, mine short and sweet. All of the boards I'm on are doing super well. I really have appreciated working with Miss Spanish Fork this year, Morgan Olson. She is a go-getter. She's busy. She's at a lot of events and a lot of elementary schools. I don't know if you scouts have had the opportunity to have Miss Spanish Fork come to your school or your class and meet her and, and hear her talk. And so she is just out very involved and, and it's just really fun to see her involvement in the community. And um, our Fiesta Days board, we met last night. Things are going smoothly. I wanted to welcome Emily Gillingwater is that Gillingwater, right? Um, she's the new events coordinator here after Elaine Hansen retired, and she is busy getting lots of the entertainment lined up and, and different things. She's just taken, getting things taken care of. So um, other than that, that's all. Thank you. Councilman Scove. Uh, Mayor, the only thing to report, um, this, uh, this Friday is Veterans Day. Um, the VFW and the American Legion will be going around to the different schools in the community. Uh, they have presentations they do every year regarding Veterans Day. Um, this Veterans Day is, is particularly special. Um, it's uh, the anniversary, the 100 year anniversary of the end of World War I. Uh, World War I because of the great slaughter and destruction that it, that it caused um, around the world was known as the war to end all wars. Um, excuse me. Um, ironically, it, 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 it certainly wasn't. Um, Veterans Day, uh, different from Memorial Day, is a day uh, to be able to recognize veterans and the victims of all wars, um, to include, as, as Councilman Mendenhall um, put so eloquently, uh, my dear friend and brother in arms, Major Brent Taylor. Um, great day, uh, the veterans community, um, the veterans organizations in our community, excuse me, uh, will do a great job and have presentations to be able to teach the, uh, the newer generations um, of the sacrifices that have taken place on, on our behalf as Americans. And so what a great, a great day that it'll, it'll be this Friday. That's all. Thank you. Council Mendenhall. Thank you, Mayor. Um, second, what Brandon Chad said about the farmers market, great farmers market this this year. It's great every year. Missed the Gordons; they were out of town, I guess, uh, serving elsewhere. But uh, but the rest of the uh, uh, vendors so fun to come down. It was kind of me and my little two-year-old's tradition every Saturday morning to come down here, and and uh, I think he stole his fair share of apples from the uh, from the what are they the McMullins, yeah, so we probably owe them a little bit of money. Uh, he walked away with a few. Uh, the Active and Healthy uh, Committee has met a, a few times since our last council meeting, uh, and in that vein of the, uh, the Active and Healthy, uh, uh, Parks and Rec Director Dale Robinson uh, helped me uh, get this to a, a, a standpoint uh, that to, we're gonna challenge the mayor to sign a document uh, tonight for us, so I hope he does, Scouts. If he doesn't, I'll look kind of really dumb tonight, so I hope he does. Um, Cookies. Yeah. The uh, uh, part of what we're a part of as far as uh, parks and recreation throughout the nation is the National Recreation and Park Association. They have a uh, magazine that comes out every month, and, and because I get to sit on the, the parks and recreation uh, board right now, I, I get that magazine as well. So I got that in my office 
couple of weeks ago, opened it up, and this page uh, talked about a 10-minute challenge, a 10-minute walk challenge. And I thought to myself, now we should be on this 10-minute walk challenge. So I start looking through who's on it and where it's at. And there's only one mayor in the state that was on it, and it was Mayor Niehaus from Moab. And I, I didn't even read through, it what, through it, what it was yet, but I know Mayor and his wife walk at least 10 minutes a day. They walk probably two hours in 10 minutes. I mean, quite a bit. Is that a stretch? <laughs> well, that's a stretch. About half that. Okay, all right. They walk every day, and you can, you, you can see them walking around uh, the community or, or on the trail. If you ever want to catch the mayor's ear, go, go on the trail early in the morning, and you'll be able to gab at the mayor, right? Yeah, you can walk with the mayor. <laughs> there you go. So I knew he, he would cover whatever this 10 minute walk was. As I read more, and I'll just read a summary of it real quick to you what it is. Um, it says the Trust Public Land National Recreation and Park Association and Urban Land Institute launched the 10 minute walk campaign in October 2017 to celebrate, recognize, and highlight cities, mayors, and other civic leaders that promote the 10 minute walk to a park goal. This goal leads to equitable, economically thriving, and safe and healthy communities. To date, more than 150 bipartisan mayors have endorsed the vision that everyone deserves a park or open space within a 10 minute walk of home. Your support of this initiative would involve the following. Number one, recognition in public materials that spotlight park champions, including the 10minutewalk.org campaign materials and press stories, access to campaign <laughs> programming and best practices, and designation of a member of your team to serve as the primary point of contact for this initiative and who will receive communications about the campaign. We would, we would be honored to have your involvement with this effort. By signing below, this document will formalize your support of this campaign and demonstrate your commitment to improving park quality and access. So I asked Dale to look at our map of parks and he assured me that if there's anywhere inside the city that you can't walk 10 minutes from where you live, Scouts, and get to open space, whether that be your school that you're by, or a, or a city park, a public facility, that our goal is to make sure that you can have a 10 minute walk to that park. I'm pretty sure we're probably 99.9% .9 already there, but uh, who's with me? Raise your hand, scouts, if you would encourage me to encourage the mayor to sign this challenge to make, your, make sure you can walk 10 minutes or less to a park in the city. Raise your hands if you want me to have him sign. Wow. I'm a scout too, so. Yeah, he's a scout, so he <laughs> voted yes too. I vote yes too, and, uh, and with the mayor sign, signing this, we'll, uh, we'll look pretty good as a, as a city that uh, is, uh, is uh, having the goal of a 10 minute walk to a park. So I'll give that to you, mayor, if you want to yeah. sign it. You'll disappoint a bunch of scouts. Well, I would never, don't. ever want to disappoint okay. Scouts. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. Um, and I didn't see if our uh, another active and healthy moment that I have ready to go tonight is for the Valentines. Are they here? Valentines here. Okay, we'll get them. A, we'll get them another okay. next week. Uh, just a, a, a teaser to that. Uh, Lyle Timmons that has been in front of us a couple of times here before went back to the senior games, and he cleaned house again. I mean, I, I would ex expect nothing less. He would not be able to fit all the medals around his neck that he's won at the, at the summer, the senior games, because uh, it's approaching like 60, and he just won five more at the, the, the games a couple weeks ago. So we're going to honor him and some kids that, that help him in that aspect of, uh, of basketball when they come next time. That's all I have. Great. All right, appreciate all that. Appreciate the chamber. Uh, also, we needed to mention about the the trick or treat on Main Street. Yep. Oh well, come back up and tell us. You know, I uh, that trick or treat on Main Street is becoming huge. Yeah, I had um, almost three pass three thousand pieces of candy, and they were gone. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. a lot of kids. So, and you then, say almost 3,000 because Weston got into a few? Yeah, maybe my kids you took a few. started out? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> so um, the scarecrow contest on Main, we had a lot of scarecrows this year, 20. So our winner was Cooney Orthodontics. They were right 
kind of by MVP Sports over here. Uh -huh. They were a little treasure, like a pirate ship mast and flag. They were the winner. And then for the family and adult um, section, it was Carla Froelich, and she's the little drummer that was down by Booth Brothers. Oh, okay. And then our school was Soren and Sam, and that was Reese Elementary. Yes. They were the <laughs> Your kids must go yeah. to Reese. <laughs> Sorry. They had Sorry, a lot. Sarah, they had over right. 400 votes for this. Is that right? Yep. So wow, they had a lot of votes. That's awesome. So, okay. Great. Okay. We better figure that out. We'll talk next about year. that after. I voted for them. I, honestly, I voted for the, the street and the stuff. <laughs> oh, the horse one was great, guys. We'll yeah. That's uh, awesome. That's another great uh, event that we have here in Spanish Fork. And, and uh, it's grown and grown and grown. And it's awesome because. There are so many kids and so much candy, and uh, yeah, it's great. So thank you. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, be in St. George last weekend, and uh, I was I met with an individual who was a former police chief of Lehigh, and we got talking. You probably know Chad. Yep. And as we were talking, he spoke very highly of you, Chief. And not only of the chief, he spoke very highly of all our police officers. He said in his opportunity to be the police chief and interact with, with uh, other officers, he said, I always like to go to Spanish Fork and hang out with them because they were solid to the earth. And he, so you go back and tell all your officers that you know, he thought they were the solid of the earth and that he enjoyed being with them. And he said, you, and you're doing a great job there. And so I wanted to pass that on. We get recognized wherever we are, and uh, it's awesome. So thank you. Okay, let's move on to um, consent items. Motion to approve the consent items. And a motion by Councilman Gordon, a second by Councilmember Beck. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We have a public hearing on our favorite topic. Kent, you want to come talk to us about the 2019 city budget? Scouts, hang on to your seats because this is good stuff right here. <laughs> well, Mayor, I, I've been scouring the city hall here and I was able to come up with 600 grand. Awesome. <laughs> pretty good budget topic, right? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, there's 600 grand right here. If the scouts can come up with a couple answers, and there might be a flying object also, I think, courtesy of Tyler. She might be throwing something. Okay, scouts, um, the first one to tell me what the total new budget is. We're changing the budget. We've had a budget for a couple months, and some projects came in. Um, some projects got deferred, so we're going to modify the budget uh, that we're going to live by for the next couple months. If first scout that can tell me the new total for the new budget, okay? Do we have a little clicker <laughs> tool? All right. Are you ready, scouts? Let's, how much is the new budget? <laughs> There's a current budget. Proposed. Speak. It's there for you to say it. Paying attention. First one to say it. Come on, Come on Nick. Come on, Nick. Oh. Give him a hundred grand. hundred grand. <laughs> Out of the city's budget, just went <laughs> to the young scout. Ryan's upset. All right. Okay, I'll be happy. Here's the next one you've got to watch for. What is the current budget for the Senior Citizen Center? Okay, you'd be thinking of that one. Senior Citizen Center and uh, the Police Department. The Parks Department, the Library, and the Swimming Pool. We'll, we'll re rehearse those a little bit. Ready? Okay, so here goes the budget. Our budget's changing a little bit on each one of these categories. Our budget is cut up into different pies. Enterprise ones down here, the big red, is for the utilities. It's for the water, the electric, the sewer, PI, all those elect utilities that are, that's how much, add up, they're, all their budgets is $58 million. The general fund usually has a whole bunch of other service things, 
inside it, and it's 26 million, and there's some miscellaneous funds for 14 million. So that adds up to the hundred million dollars in a budget. This is how it's changing this time. If you can see, this green is what their current budget is. The red column is the new budget. That's a hint, Scouts. You want to follow the red one if you want to find out what the new budget is for the um, senior center, the police department, the parks, the library, and the swimming pool. You want to follow the red column on that because that's the new one. This column tells you how much it changed. And what I'm going to give instructions to the council is you can see that the general fund increased a million three hundred thousand. We'll talk about what those are. The enterprise funds incre decreased two and a half million. That's great to have a decrease. And projects we're not going to get to. They will get done, but they'll get done in a future year, but not in this year. And the miscellaneous funds we increased two point eight million. We'll talk about what those are in just a few minutes. Okay, Scouts, can you find the Senior Center one? Anybody? Nice. All right, Police Department. Anybody raise your hand? There it is, right here. Right here. Nice. <laughs> and we have the parks. Parks right here. Go ahead. You. Okay. So the parks is six million two hundred sixty-five thousand three hundred fifty. Very good. Very good. That's a big budget. Can you see that the parks wouldn't change and the police have changed? So we're going to talk about what those were. Those changes are inside those. And what was the other one we we're going to talk about? Library. Library right here. That's very good. Last one, pool, swimming pool. Right here, right behind you. Behind you, all right, right here. That's it. It's a pretty expensive swimming pool, isn't it? <laughs> it is pretty expensive. Um, Here's a discussion on the police department. So the police department increased 171,000, and what that is is some new vehicles for them. So the way we're, we're budgeting now is when we add to the fleet, or we add new officers, they're going to be budgeting out of their own for the, first, for the purchase of the first one. So these are the three new uh, vehicles that we have in the police department for the new officers we have. Um, from then on, we're going to budget a lease payment. You can see in this lower number, there's the lease payment to, to replace the police cars going in the future, which will be charged out. But this is for the first time on that one. <coughs> and this is for the parks. It's a big parks uh, increase. There's a million, 68,000 increase in capital projects. And what those two are, um, you're going to get a, a, a change order after this meeting on the tra North Park Trail Connector, I think. Is that right? Is that one? They're, they're in, the, in this revision, but it's also in the contract you're going to see today. And then the finishing up of the sports park. Scouts, have you noticed the sports park? Anything new down at the sports park? New workout place. Anything further on the west side? Been down there lately? The mini tennis courts. Do you know what those are called? Pickleball. Pickleball courts. You're gonna look good wearing those pickleball courts. Wow. <laughs> okay, the pickleball court. Maybe I think they all ought to get up here in just a minute and tell us more about the sports thing, because this is a this is a big thing for our city. You can see how much we've spent on capital projects in the parks land. Look, we spent four million dollars. Uh, in this year and, and a lot last year just in the parks and uh, programs and stuff. So that's a lot of money for our, for our residents that they get to enjoy. So Dale, nice job. He's a high point man. He's, he's him and the electric. So in the end, this is what the, the new budget is, uh, $100 million. It's the first time we've gone over $100 million, and by the time we get to the end of this meeting, if we cut some projects down, we might get them underneath the $100,000. We'll see if that happens. But. 
Um, enterprise funds, the budget change in it was, uh, we had to decrease. So you can see some of these big minuses. There's some electric projects that we just won't get to this year. Not that they don't need to be done, but um, we can only do so many projects each year. And same with the water department. There, there was a decrease in some of those projects. I think in the water department was a grant. We we're anticipating getting a, a large grant, and the grant that came through was about as half as much as what we thought. Chris? Yeah. This is here. Um, in the miscellaneous ones, there's only really one, uh, two capital project things that had a change right here. So it's increasing 2.8 million, about 2 million, uh, 2.2 or 3 million of that is uh, some expenses that are incurred out in the Canyon Creek area, which is out by Walmart and um, the new development out there by the hospital. So there's some major improvements out there. The city's fronting those costs and the developer's gonna pay the city back, but we have to incur those expenses up front so we have to budget them. So that was probably the main reason for this budget revision was to allow us to uh, incur those expenses, but they will be reimbursed to us from the developer as for the most part. Uh, the other part of it is, uh, I don't know if the scouts have been noticing on the top of Center Street, there's some houses that are gradually being torn down at the very top of Center Street just before you get to Highway 6. This is another project to finish out uh, the purchasing of some of those homes so they can widen the road to make it safer around the school zone and uh, as the entrance onto uh, Highway 6. So there's uh, two uh, capital project funds that have an increase of 2.8 million. And so that brings us, um, these are some of the projects that was listed originally um, and some of those are still in the works right now that we're planning on in those different areas. Again, this is the total uh, budget change and increase of $1.5 million from uh, $99 uh, million to just over 100000 So it's a $1.5 million increase for a new budget of $100 million right there. That's all I have. Great. All right. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to go into public hearing. So moved. Second. There a motion by Councilman Scopes, a second by Councilman Mendenhall. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we're in public hearing now. Anyone that would like to come up and talk about the budget and stand before 8 million people on TV, come on up. <laughs> If not, I'd entertain a motion to go out of public hearing. So moved. Second. A motion by Councilman Gordon, a second by Councilman Mendenhall. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. You need us to vote on that? Yes, please. Okay. If there isn't any other questions or comments, I'd entertain mm -hmm. a motion. I move that we approve fiscal year 2019 city budget, city budget revision number one. Second. A motion by Councilman Scobes, a second by Councilman Mendenhall. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is approved. New business, approval of the Y, FY, wait, didn't we just do that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Way to go. North Park, Main Street, Connector Trail, change order number three. What did I tell you about that? <laughs> this is the last change we're on this project. Oh, yeah, well, okay. all right. I heard you. You're on, you're on TV. <laughs> I've got witnesses now. Well, you've probably seen the projects done, so. Um, so out of North Park, we uh, did a trail connector uh, from Joann's to North Park. Uh, during construction, it was determined that the existing fill that was uh, next to the uh, the retaining wall. We had to excavate for the footing. It was determined that that field was no good, so we had to uh, bring in more import. Last one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us what, how much, and what it's all about. It's just for over $44,000. It's for all the engineered fill and road bases with the project. 
There was a, a line item change to just bring in the more fill that was required to build the project right. All right, any questions? Okay. It Did looks I good. A motion? I move, uh, make a motion to approve the North Park Main Street Connector Trail change order number three. Second. Got a motion by Council Mendenhall, a second by Council Member Beck. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You're lucky. Chris is going to have me stay up for the next one. He so. wants you to stay up there for the next one. Amendment to the General Atomics ground lease for parking lot. So General Atomics has requested an amendment to their le existing lease agreement, which would enable them to build a parking lot next to their building. Uh, this expanded lease would provide approximately $12,000 in additional annual lease revenue to the airport. The lease rate is five cents per square foot and based on a 7% capitalization rate using the average Utah County valuations of adjoining properties. And so we're just required to lease the property out at fair market value. So right. that's what this lease agreement's for. We did discuss this in an airport board meeting and decided it was, uh, yeah, recommended it to the council to let them build that uh, parking lot. Are you here to speak more to General Atomics and their economic impact or something Some different? Time, yes. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. So just kind of related to that, um, General Atomics, they've added quite a few employees recently. They have plans to build some additional parking, obviously. They won't have that done this construction season. They're very concerned about providing a safe place for their employees to park. The particular shift that they're worried about starts at 5.30, pleasure ground at 3.30 in the afternoon. And we're here tonight to get the council's blessing on the concept of allowing them, and it is public parking, so I think that's something to keep in mind, but we have quite a bit of parking at the sports park, other end of town. And they would like us to make 50 spaces available to them from basically December, April 1, uh, from those hours, you know, approximately 5.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, so that their employees can park there uh, should they need to use that space. Um, they're trying to encourage their employees to carpool and do different things like that so they can use their existing parking a little bit more efficiently. But um, do you have any thoughts or concerns about that? Just us simply giving them a nod that they'd be allowed to uh, to use some of that sports park parking, which I think would happen literally during the part of our year where it otherwise would be used absolutely the least, both in terms of the season and the hours of the day. Um, and I believe that they're comfortable doing, for example, maybe some parking lot cleaning and that sort of a thing, maybe in exchange for, uh, again, just your blessing to, uh, to use that parking. So just temporary until they get there. Literally bill. from those, I think it'd be four months altogether that they'd like to use it. They believe they can have their additional parking constructed here, essentially by the 1st of April. So that's what they're aiming for. Where, where are you doing the additional parking? Mine's not working. Not working. Here's. Oh, just right here. Even <laughs> all <laughs> 200 feet to the west. Uh, pretty neat company when you discuss it in the airport board meeting. And I know some of us know because I think we've been there on a chamber trip before. But a company that's not all that publicly known that's in our city. And it's by design because they do a lot of defense contracting work. Uh, but, uh, but really uh, precise uh, engineering type jobs pretty cool to have them expanding in our community is a is a is a cool thing that many more people working at that facility means they're making a, a pretty large investment in the community definitely great uh any other questions if not i'd entertain a motion i move uh we approve the addendum to the general atomics ground lease for parking lot second Got a motion by Councilman Mendenhall, a second by Councilman Scobes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Library janitorial agreement. 
on using the, the parking of the sports park and gathering. That was part of that. Okay. Part That's of my fine. motion. That was part of his motion. Thanks. We're okay with that, as long as it's temporary. As long as it's temporary during the winter. Will you check on them at 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> no, but you should be walking down there about then. We'll have a, yeah. we'll have a trail <laughs> plowed for you. You yeah. just go by and make sure everything's okay, will you? As long as the trail's <laughs> plowed, I'll be there. Okay. Um, you've all received a, uh, a staff report on this custodial agreement. Um, we've, had, uh, we've had the same custodian over at the library for over 12 years now. Um, and things have started to go a little bit south and we've had some challenges and so we decided it's time to uh, send this out to, to an RFP and uh, we sent it out to six different custodial comp comp companies to do the cleaning over there. Two of them actually responded with bids. Uh, we're proposing that uh, we award that contract to RMB. Um, Building services, um, there's a, their uh, bid was twenty thousand nine forty and ninety six cents annually. Uh, it is a four year contract. Uh, the other bid was twenty four thousand eight sixty four. Um, and RBM does some other cleaning uh, in the city for us, so we're familiar with them, um, and and uh, they do an exceptional job. These again, these are four year contracts, so we'll be asking for. Uh, to get a notice of award. Uh, we gave a 30-day notice uh, to Four Star Custodial who was doing the work previously. Um, that notice ends on November 17th. So this new contract will be in effect uh, on Monday, the 19th of November. So um, any, con any, any questions for me on this agreement? They clean anything else for us? Uh, yes, they do. Um, let me see. I'm trying to remember where they're at now, uh, but they they do some they do some other things for us now, and I don't recall what it is right now. Is it your? It's not your building. Yeah, I can't remember who they. They do this building. They do. Yeah, city building. Oh, okay. So they do a good job. Yeah, we've got some history with them. So. Cool. Okay, if there isn't any questions, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve the four-year contract with RBM Cleaning Services in the amount of $83,763.84. Second. A motion by Councilman Gordon, a second by Councilman Argal. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, passes. Are we doing legacy, Seth? Not really, but Okay, well, we're not really going to do legacy really farm amendment, but kind of <laughs> development agreement. So we've been working on this contract, as you're aware, for the last couple of months. A uh, handful of issues that we're trying to nail down with the developer that's working in the legacy farms area. And we have what Junior and I think is maybe one remaining, uh, one, one remaining issue to get hammered out, but unfortunately we weren't able to get the communication back in time for it to be put on the agenda such that you could review the draft. We can circulate the most recent draft with you in our comments so you have it and, and are ready hopefully for our next council meeting. But um, one thing I wanted to talk about with you since we're already here is and maybe Junior, you can teach a little bit about what, what you feel like needs to happen with the relationship to the development agreement and other things. Can you do that in yeah, here? Kind of putting Junior on the goes <coughs> because the contract's not Yes, we won't get into any, any into any details into the contract other than to say, as, as I think you're all aware, that they're seeking to add a church site into Legacy Farms project. Uh, for those of you who are leaving out there and are traveling away to church, you'll appreciate that. We think that's a good idea, but that is, is causing uh, a revision of the plat to have to take place. Uh, on who's the current developer has purchased outright some of the phases, but they have options to purchase the rest of them. That's very common in the development world and nothing to be alarmed about, but because of those future options, as we amend the development agreement to accommodate this church, we need to bring the original signers in in case 
uh, that, act, that option is an exercise. So attorneys always think in the worst case scenario and so to protect ourselves we need to do that. Before we're, we're actually ready to finalize that agreement, we need to uh, amend the original agreement with the original owner. So Legacy wants their own agreement, uh, we don't have any issue with that, but, but we either need to prove that contingent on getting the amendment with the original owners done or we need to do them simultaneously. And so since it didn't get quite ready for tonight, assuming that, that they accept our, our last change, which we feel very strongly about, by the way, uh, we'll work on that, see if we can have them both uh, ready to present to you next meeting. Great. Thank you. So we need a formal motion to table that? No. Okay. Lovely. And do we have anything in closed session? I move we adjourn. Second. Got a motion by Councilman Gordon, a second by Councilman Mendenhall. Oh. Go ahead. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? But let me just give you an update. It's, it's not an action item, so we're, we're adjourned as fine. But uh, the Utah Court of Appeals on Friday issued a ruling on the Jamie Evans and uh, UDOT case, and Jamie prevailed on that. And uh, the court instructed UDOT to issue permits for his billboards. Uh, that's the case we litigated because he failed to have them, and then we won ours, but UDOT lost there. So he will be coming back and applying for billboard permits. Based on our ordinance, it uh, complies subject to having UDOT permits. I did talk to the attorney up in the attorney general's office uh, via email about that. They're not going to appeal that to the Supreme Court, so this is where it will land. So we'll see some billboards there in the, in the coming months. So the structures are already up? Yep. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> Longer. Never took them down. All right. Thank you. Scouts, you lucked out. That was a short meeting tonight. Yes, it was. No frisbees were flying, so maybe Yeah. Why don't, why don't you put a couple on your shoulders and have them change the clock? So there you go. That's savings. a good idea. Good. Thank you for being here. <laughs> wow.